Hey, my name is Ronald. This is my software journal. Today, we're going to be talking about a question I've been getting back to back the last couple of months. And this question is, should I do mechanical engineering or computer science for software engineering? You would think this question is pretty straightforward. Computer science. But in actuality, it really isn't. And you're gonna see within this video, I'm gonna explain more in detail. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I talk about coding, entrepreneurship, and my life in general as a software engineer. If this is something you might be interested in, subscribe to the fam. Without further ado, let's get into it. Before we get started into diving into these degrees, mechanical engineering, and computer science, let's quickly term the three terms, software engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science. Let's get that down back. Starting with software engineering. According to Wiki, software engineering is the systematic approach of engineering approaches to the development of software. Okay, that's pretty high level. What about some other notable definitions? According to the IEE Standard Glossary of Software Engineering Terminology, it is the approach of a systematic, discipline, quantifier approach to the development, operation, and maintenance of software. Oh, I like that one. That was pretty nice. Another notable definition comes from the book of Software Engineering at Google. It says, Software engineering encompasses not just the act of writing code, but all the tools and processes an organization uses to build and maintain that code over time. Over time. Software engineering can be thought of as programming integrated over time. I actually read a couple of pages on this book. Pretty good read. You know, check it out. It's a free link. And you do the preview, you can view like a couple of hundred pages of this book. Go check it out. So what's this systematic approach that keeps on coming up in this definition? So I came up with six steps that pretty much break down the process in which you will develop software. So the first step is system gathering. All right, number two, then you have design. Then you have number three, the software development. Then you have number four, deployment. Number five, testing. And the last bit of one is six, maintenance. So that's that with software engineering. What about mechanical engineering? What's the definition of mechanical engineering? According to Wiki, mechanical engineering is a engineering branch that combines engineering physics, mathematics, principles with materials, science to design, analyze, manufacture, and maintain mechanical systems. Just a quick overview of mechanical engineering job duties, which are research, designing, building, and testing mechanical thermal devices. This could include tools, engines, machinery, and etc. They analyze and gather specifications on how mechanical and thermal devices can solve a particular problem. They design and redesign that solution to solve this problem. They also develop and test product solution prototypes. Along with that, they analyze test results of that solution and see if changes need to be resigned for that solution to solve that problem. Lastly, they oversee the product solution. Hmm, this is looking a little bit too familiar. Hmm. A notable subdiscipline of mechanical engineering is mechatronics and robotics. Mechatronics and robotics is a combination of mechanical, electrical, and software engineering to build out integrated hybrid systems. So that's enough of that. Computer science. According to Wiki, computer science is the study of algorithmic processes, computational machines, and computational itself. It is tea time. Back to the show. Overall computer science job duties consist of identify and solve complex technology problems in business, medicine, and other major industries. They also consult with end users, managers, vendors to determine computing goals and system requirements. Moreover, they utilize technical writing skills to document and publish their most significant findings. And lastly, they do some coding here and there. Some notable fields computer scientists might get into are artificial intelligence such as neural networks, computer vision, and also natural language processing. They might also go into computer architecture organizations such as operating systems, embedded system, and system architecture. And guess what? software engineering. Let's check out the curriculum for these two degrees. I'm going to use my alumni website, Go Gators. Yeah, it's right over left, I think so. Or left over right. Yeah, it's left over right. There it is. That's all the free promotion you're going to get from me. Let's go. Here's some courses I believe helped me be a better software engineer. Number one, analytical geometry and calculus two. 
This course focuses on proofs, deriving formulas and equations, and finally applying concepts to real world application. I think this was extremely helpful because it really helped with, you know, creating the formulas. Also getting the process of actually thinking about algorithms. If you really think about some of these solutions, they had like sequences and series and stuff, and all that stuff really applies and add up later on down the line, especially when you're scaling with stuff. Then we have number two, computer programming for engineers. Back when I took this class, back in my day, it used C++ instead of MATLAB. MATLAB was more widely used for my undergrad, mainly for those data analysis type projects and stuff. It was a lot of data analysis and crunching the numbers based off of data that we got from experiments. Despite the current changes in today's curriculum, we went over the basis of object-oriented programming and just those four pillars of how to implement those OOP concepts in C++. We have to actually do code and actually solve problems with that goal. And I think that was really a big help because it really got me to the thinking of how to break stuff down, put that into code. Then we have number three, Dynamics and Control System Design Lab. We actually had a class too, but that was more theoretical and all this other stuff. But this lab was actually more hands-on. In this course, we did experiments on dynamic systems and mechanical and aerospace engineering, and also designing control systems for those systems. In this course, I learned everything from gathering information making a design, prototyping, redesigning, and also just, you know, getting it out there as fast as possible. Because ultimately we had like a short period of time to get a particular lab done. We have multiple labs in a particular semester. So it really got me pulling your toes on solving problems, getting it done fast, and just going over that iterative process really fast and not really being perfect about it. This course was heavily into problem solving, like I mentioned, and I loved it. I felt like I lived in the lab during that semester and it was an amazing experience and I wouldn't change it for the world. Lastly, we have Mechanical Engineering Design 3. So this was more of like a senior type project and pretty much it took like the whole entire semester to finish it. In this course, we designed and developed a mechanical engineering system to its appropriate standards and constraints. This was a team project, so I had you know two or three other people on my team. And yeah, it was a really big understanding of communication. And the technical stuff was there, all the other stuff was pretty straightforward, but really understanding how to work as a team and break items down really got me into the understanding of how to you know communicate with other people. I think this is really helpful and I think this is undervalued as far as being an engineer in general software engineering, electrical, whatever. It's so important and that's the main takeaway I got from this class. All right, so let's get into some CS courses I believe would have helped me as a software engineer today. We have first, number one, computer programming fundamentals one and two. I know that number one would have to do with the basics and number two would have to do with more advanced topics. In this course, it covers the concepts of computer science in the process of computer programming. This includes object-oriented programming, procedural, data abstracts, and program modularity. Then we have number two, of course, data structures and algorithms. This one's pretty straightforward. You already know data structures and algorithms, especially in higher tech companies, is just a needed concept to understand. Because if you understand how algorithms and how to scale algorithms up and make sure that can your algorithm scale based off the time and space complexity? Knowing when to utilize a certain data structure. So that's really important. And I think that's something that I especially would benefit from. I mean, I'm learning it now and I think it's pretty beneficial. I think people should continue to learn it anyway, but yeah. This is a story for another day. In this course, it discuss the basic programming structures, storage and manipulation of basic data structures like arrays, stats, queues, etc. Along with sorting, searching, and stream processing. Now we have number three, introduction to software engineering. It's pretty straightforward. In this course, it discuss software planning, specifications, coding, testing, and maintenance. So we have number four, I was fighting between the operating systems and computer network fundamentals, but ultimately I chose information and database systems number one. In this course, I discuss principles and techniques of modern database systems. It covers topics such as modeling and querying of data using conceptual data models, as well as the development of database applications. In conclusion, if I would do it all over again, I would still do mechanical engineering but I will take courses in CS such as data structures, database systems, 
and computer network. I really enjoyed my experience as a mechanical engineer as an undergrad because I think it really improved how I thought about processes and how to break things down. Knowing that is so invaluable. It's just overall a great degree because it touches on so many different aspects of engineering and more. I learned construction, design, business, HVAC, electrical, programming, and the list goes on. Maybe it's just my personality because I really get bored sticking to one thing for too long. With mechanical engineering, pretty much the options are limitless. I got so many different ways I can use this mechanical engineering to transfer to different other engineering aspects. And I could have went to something related to electrical right out of the college. And my curiosity just continues to span as I find things that are more fascinating. It might be something that I get focused on tunnel vision for a very long time, but then I switched that to something that is, you know, giving me more fire and passion. And that's probably one of the reasons why I switched myself over from mechanical to software engineering because I feel like there was just like this discontinuous boy of knowledge that I can gain from software engineering that I couldn't do with mechanical engineering. But I still use those principles that I learned from mechanical engineering to my software career. So I hope that helped you guys out. I got this question so many times from my followers and people who come onto my page and channel. So I hope you guys got a lot of value from that. If you got some value from that, you know, give this thing a thumbs up, help the algorithm out for my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you can be updating any awesome videos that I put out. So until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.